friends and welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me, my name is Heather and I run a small handmade business called Lemon Tree Corner where I make purses and bags and project bags for makers like you. Welcome, welcome. This week in the studio we're going to be working on the Hawaiian blanket. I have all my squares cut out and all ready to go. I've labeled them all with the corresponding uh, photo number that I have on the grid. So just trying to think through the logistics of how I'm going to lay all the squares out to sew them together. Um, <clears throat> the only surface I have that's really large enough for that is the bed itself. So maybe I will take half the width, sew those squares together, and the other half of the row, sew those together, and then sew them, sew those two pieces together. That might be the easiest way to do it. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do when this thing gets really big after I sew all the squares together. And then I have to find a long arm quilter to put this all together for me and go online and find backing fabric. So those are the next steps for that. And then we're going to continue on with our, oh, let me get it here, our Moroccan blanket. So last week we made a little bit of progress with that. I uh, was able to do these color block portions, which I really like. I would like to do maybe a scarf or a blanket in that pattern. I really like that three row color repeat. And then I guess the next thing is I'm going to be making one, two, three, four uh, squares, like little granny squares, to go around these corners. And then I think we're on to the actual other, the other squares that make the whole border. So that's nice to get back into that. Um, just for some reason, I just struggle with the directions and doing the whole thing because it's a lot more involved than the normal crocheting that I do. But that was the whole point of taking it on. So I just need to stay calm and take it one stitch at a time and we'll get through this blanket. And then in the coming months, I'm trying to figure out if I'm gonna do Christmas in September where we put together that advent calendar with all of the uh, felt and embroidery, or if I'm gonna make that more of a Vlogmas and Vlogtober <laughs> and do kind of the Vlogtober thing. I wouldn't vlog every day, but I might vlog every two or three days during October. And that would be lots of content for us to focus on is the advent calendar and the felt ornaments. And also I've got my, um, my Christmas blanket that we need to finish before Christmas. So that might be a good motivator is taking one or both of those months to work on that project. So that's what we have coming up. I'm also anxiously awaiting the day I can purchase some fish and put them in the fish tank. I think we're a go for the fish tank. Uh, there's a few things we can do to make it a little quieter and I think I think it'll be fine where it is. So. Moving forward with that, just need to wait for the good bacteria to grow so that the fish don't die when I bring them home. <laughs> and as always, if you like my videos and you've been here before, I would love it if you would hit the like button and the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And any comments you want to leave would be great. Any interaction you have with the channel tells YouTube that I'm somebody interesting that other people might want to watch. <laughs> So they suggest my videos to people who watch videos like the ones you watch. So they look at um, who's watching my videos and suggest my content to other people that are like-minded so we can grow this community together. Uh, the subscribers just keep growing, so I'm really happy. I appreciate everybody uh, taking the time to subscribe, and I really love having you all here along on the journey with me. So thank you very much. And I just feel so honored that you would want to spend time with me. So I really appreciate you all being here and would love to have more of you who watch the videos join us. And I can't remember, I think I saw it on Instagram this week or somebody was talking about it in their videos about um, one of their author friends that they look up to was talking about celebrating the small moments just as much as the big moments meaning time cuddling with your dog on the couch or drinking a cup of tea uh, meant the same to her as publishing a book, which is quite amazing if you think about it. 
uh, if we took the time to celebrate all those little moments and really appreciate them the way that we do the big moments or we just think about the big moments more or dream about the big moments more but it's all these little moments that add up and the fact that you know how you live your life day to day matters it means something and what you're putting out into the world means something and who you are who you are and what you bring to the world means something so just think about that this week all those little things that you do and appreciating them obviously you wouldn't do them if you didn't enjoy doing them <laughs> so how can we put that out into the world uh, a lot of us feel like we can't brag about something or tell somebody about something unless it's something big uh, where you know you just went on a walk with your dog or you worked on your crocheting this morning while drinking your coffee or listening to your audiobook and that was just a really wonderful moment that you relished and just share that with somebody and let them know that it's okay to celebrate the little things as well. Okay, time to get in the studio and figure this all out. <laughs>
I'm leaving my soul out in the pouring rain, alone without a name. I'm a good son, I'm a good brother from a good father. I wanna know where I'm going to and what I'm passing through. Rebound from a turnaround, hitting the ground hard. Thought I'd let you know it wasn't long ago. The truth is, I'd rather be blind to some things in my mind, and I wanna go. Thought that you better be ready, better be ready for. And there's probably more. I don't play the game; they just call me Kid Shame. That's my name. I laugh at you if you stay, and I cry if you walk away. The truth is, I'd rather be blind to something. So my sister invited me to a scrapbook day, which I haven't done my scrapbooking in a really long time. I'm very behind. And uh, one of the things that we had all talked about when COVID hit was doing a COVID album. So what we thought was only going to be like a couple of months of lockdown and everything, of course, turned into years. So um, I had bought this special album. It says... Together is our favorite place to be. So this is going to be my COVID album. I've got lots of different things here. Um, special creative memories packs that they made for COVID that has like certain stickers about COVID-19 and social distancing and all of those kind of key keywords that you had to do. Wash your hands, staying home. 
um, all of that thing. Stress baking. <laughs> so just some some backgrounds for that. Um, I've got a lot of pages loaded in here, and I believe I already replaced the things. No. So I have special um, special holders that I like better than the ones that come with the albums. So I have those that I need to replace that with. And then I went to pick out everything and I have over 500 photos. So Walgreens was really busy printing out all these photos for me. So what did I end up with? Like 523 photos. And then I also got some things like some cute memes that were of the day, um, social distancing and, you know, like all those memes that were going around. And then I also printed out some headlines like, and things like got dressed today, <laughs> little things that were those funny, funny memes going around. And then I have like the coronavirus headlines. I'm going to talk about when the vaccine came out. I have pictures of me getting my first vaccine shot and things like that. And then the rest of the photos are just things we did, things we did when we were stuck at home. So we have um, going to the beach because that was the only exercise and getting out of the house we could do. Me with all the extra cooking I was doing because I was at home, my crafts. Um, starting English paper piecing, all the crochet projects I got to catch up on, all that kind of thing. And then hosting my nephew graduated during that time, had a virtual graduation. Um, moved into my new office and my, at my job I transferred into a different area. So I got to move into my new office during <laughs> this whole thing, during... Um, we were still working from home when I had to go into work and move my office. And then oh, virtual choir practices and virtual choir performances. And just just a record of the year and beyond, like having, having Thanksgiving and Christmas outside uh, because we didn't want everybody in the family exposed um, being inside together. So all of that kind of thing is chronicled here. Uh, I don't imagine that I'm actually going to get 500 photos scrapbooked in this book uh, in one day, but we will we will start to try. And there's a lot of a lot of pages. And you know the joy of scrapbooking is that you don't have to use the whole photo. You can cut the photo down and fit more things on the page. And also, obviously, you know. Four sheets of 12 by 12 paper in each pack is not going to be enough background paper to use for this album. So I have some other papers that I've picked out. So I'm just going to put all of this together. Um, kind of take, pack everything I need in one of those rolly carts that I bought. So that I'm ready to go for the day. And that's going to be next Saturday. So just want to be prepared and only bring what I need. And it's always a pain when you go scrapbooking, especially only for one day. And you brought the kitchen sink and your whole car is full and just want to avoid doing all that. Okay, so here's all my random paper that I had bought. Um, just random backgrounds, but I had bought some paper packs that I thought would be good for, for any of my albums. So I might just take one of these to be a theme for one of the COVID albums. It's kind of hard because there's such a variety of photos. There's like beach photos and craft photos and family photos. But this one might work. There's just a lot of different things going on. So that might be good. And then I definitely had kind of a fall. I really love the fall paper. I don't have a lot of fall photos in here, but I do have the Thanksgiving we hosted in the backyard. So maybe like the pumpkin pie. Oh, there's the Thanksgiving one. Yeah, so I could take that. Happy Thanksgiving, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so that would be good to take this one with me. Gobble, gobble. 
<clears throat> eat, drink, and wear stretchy pants. I love these. I just have an obsession with with scrapbook paper. It's very much like um, fabric for me. And all the pies. Okay, so I should probably just bring all of these packs with me because I'm gonna need a little bit of everything to go through the year. I even have like Christmas photos when we we drove around looking at everybody's Christmas decorations with the Christmas music on the radio <clears throat> just as a way to you know fill the time during Christmas time when you would have been with other people so just a nice variety of backgrounds I don't necessarily like the super shiny ones but see even that would be good for some of the beach photos and then yeah maybe I'll pick out um, I do have special Christmas paper so maybe I'll pick some of that out and then just gather everything in one place so that I have Everything ready to go.
Hey everyone! So I don't really have a plan for this other than laying them out in a row, actually splitting, splitting the rows in half, laying them out and then bringing them over here stacked. Um, I'm using, what's the color on this? I'm using Aurifil 2311 uh, for the color here. It's just a white. It's a nice neutral white and it's cotton. I can't remember if it's 50. What is it? Yeah, it's Aurifil 50. So this is the one Fat Quarter Shop recommends. So that's why I bought it. <laughs> so I did this, I used this for my um, my table runner quilt project when I pieced together the table runner top. So that's why I'm using it. And I'm basically just gonna sew all the blocks together. I'm gonna chain piece since I'm already splitting the row in half anyway, figured save some thread and chain piece these together. And this is how we'll continue to go. Um, it's a lot of walking around the bed trying to gather up the right squares and lay them all out. So I'm going to get my steps in today. <laughs> so that's good. So let's keep going. I've already confused the two rows. <laughs> I have to go back to the grid. Um, it should be the yellow one next, unless I accidentally grabbed two yellows. But I know there was a yellow in each row, so oh no, now I'm very confused. Okay, let's go back to the row. Shoot. So this one was that one. No, that should be right. Okay. So I should be, I'm just going to double check, just going to double check before we get too far here. Okay, I'm correct. I just don't want to get these two rows mixed up because I'm alternating them. So that's, that's going to be confusing. Maybe I shouldn't alternate them. Maybe I should just not try and chain piece. And just do one at a time. Just feels like a waste of fabric or a waste of thread. If I had to cut these out a single time. I don't know. Okay, so I have my first two, and I'm already getting them confused, so um, 
I'm thinking it's probably not a good idea to try chain piecing. I'm probably just better off sewing a whole half a row at a time. Um, what I am going to do is label these. So behind the first one, I'm going to label this with a heat erase pen. I'm going to label this. 1A and 1B, and of course, this pen's not going to work because it's red. Let me get another pen. Oh, let me try the white one there. No. Okay, so I'm going to label these. Ow. I'm going to label these 1A and 1B, and so that way. I don't have to sew them together right away. I'm gonna iron. I'm gonna iron all the seam allowances to one side, and do the opposite for row two. So it'll be um, left, right, left, right, left, right kind of thing. Um, so I can iron these, and then I have to figure out where I'm putting these in between. I'm um, just gonna make like long stacks of these, and then I think I'll sew these together. I'll sew the two halves together right before I'm ready to join it to row two, so that way it's smaller. I mean, you can see it's already it's already pretty long and unwieldy, so I don't know where I'm storing these, because I'm obviously not getting this project done in one week. Um, so that'll be interesting. Yeah, I think I'm, it was really, my mind just kept mixing up the two rows here, or mixing up the two halves. So the two piles of fabric that I had to add to each one. Um, so that's probably not a good idea. I'll probably just do one half at a time and forget about the chain piecing. But in the meantime, I don't know where I'm going to store these in between. So I'll label these, um, iron them, and then find somewhere to put these in the meantime. <laughs>
Okay, so it totally sucks. I I was just piecing everything together and realized that I wasn't on the right row. I had somehow started on row two for like one square and then jumped back up to row one when I was laying out the squares. So I was worried I was gonna have to tear it all apart, but thankfully I have a repeat in the pattern. <laughs> so I'm able to go, I think it was to row 11, is where that, that exact repeat was. So I went ahead, I'm gonna keep that as row seven. I'm just gonna label it for future so I don't have to tear that all apart, which is good. Um, and then I'm just gonna flip flop that first square on those two rows that repeat so that I have enough squares for everything. <laughs> so crisis averted. Um, and what I've done now is, what I've done now is I went ahead and labeled all of the rows with the number. So hopefully I'll be looking at the right, I also added some space between them so that when I'm laying out these squares, I'm not jumping to a, a wrong row. So hopefully that'll help a lot. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for joining me. We got a lot done this week. Well, a lot done, consider, all things considering. I didn't get too much farther on the Moroccan blanket. Uh, I only got three of the squares done. Let me see if it'll focus, there we go. So these are the little granny squares that are gonna go in the corners. There's gonna be four in each corner. So I've got a few left to do. So basically those squares are going to go in the corners and you know looking at this it only looks like one would fit in the corner 
So <laughs> let me make sure that's in the screen. There you go. So this is what we're going to make these squares and attach them here. So I don't know why they have me making 12 of them. It looks like only it would only take two to go around the corner. I'll have to reread the pattern, make sure I'm doing it correctly. I would hate to make 12 squares when I only need to make one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll double check that. We also put together almost half of the rows for the Hawaiian blanket. So it's looking pretty busy. So we'll see what it looks like when it gets on the, you know, on the bed as a whole quilt. But uh, I had the, the genius move of hanging them on a hanger. So these are all the half rows that I have to join together, like this is 6A and 6B that have to be joined together. And then they will all be joined together, um, the rows will all be joined together later. So that's as far as we got on that project. <clears throat> and other than that, I've just been dealing with um, prepping for the new semester at work, so work's getting pretty busy ramping up for the new semester that starts in two weeks. And also have a weird situation with my eye. So I got a floater in my eye a couple days ago. Kind of looks like a dead spider is stuck in my eye right now. And uh, had me really worried because I'm extremely nearsighted and I have diabetes. So things happening with your eyes is a pretty serious thing. And uh, so I hurried up, made an eye appointment, and got in there to see my eye doctor. Um, and they were able to look at it and go, no, this is a normal, normal part of aging. So I'm getting old, <laughs> apparently, is for this to kind of detach from your eye. It's not a detached retina. I just mean that the actual globule of jelly detaches and floats around and then gets absorbed by your body. So it's still kind of attached right now, um, but it's nothing like a big tear or a retinal detachment or anything, because that would be emergency surgery. So I, I feel better, but I had a couple of anxious days there not knowing what's going on and just freaking out about the whole thing. Um, so I didn't get a lot of work done this week, <laughs> mainly because of that, just being worried about that and then being anxious made me extremely tired, so I wound up taking a nap when I got home and sleeping most of the night away, so kind of ran out of all of my craft time. It's still there, and it's still kind of difficult. I'm trying not to really drive anywhere major uh, during this. It's supposed to, my eye's supposed to get used to it and just kind of work around it, which I don't know how that's going to happen, and then eventually it will actually just come loose and be absorbed by the body. So that's an interesting new development <laughs> in my life. <laughs> but uh, hopefully it's nothing too serious. Um, I do have a follow-up appointment. And if it doesn't get better by then, they're gonna have to dilate my eyes, which I absolutely hate. Um, I have a panic attack. There's just something about the dilation drops and your eye feels sticky and your vision goes and it just leaves me like literally on the floor. I have to like lay down on the floor, white as a sheet, full on panic attack. So I'm not looking forward to that if I have to, if I have to do that to make sure my eyes are okay, of course I'm gonna do it, but uh, just very scary for me. So a lot of high anxiety this week. Uh, so if you can say a prayer or send good vibes my way, I would really appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, I think that's it. We're still waiting for the fish tank to get all good and ready for the fish. I've got another week for that. And it's technically not an exact science. So I have to keep testing the water to make sure it's actually ready for the fish. Um, I might get one or two fish just as kind of the, <laughs> the trial fish to see if it's ready and see if they survive before I obviously fill the whole tank with fish. Um, I hope they survive, but I need a few testers because uh, the readings on the tank are not what anybody is like telling me they should be. So I'm not sure what's going on. I still have to go to the 
fish store down the street. Maybe they can help me figure out where my tank is supposed to be. I can bring in the test strip and have them help me with that. That would be probably a smart idea. Okay. <laughs> so I'm all packed and ready to go for scrapbooking this week with my sister. So I'll take you along for that journey next week. And we'll also finish um, sewing all the rows together and make the rest of those squares for the blanket and get that going. So thanks for joining me this week, everybody. And I hope you have a wonderful, restful week ahead. And stay cool if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. Everywhere is just like super hot right now. <laughs> so get yourself an ice cream cone or a cold drink. Just do anything you can to stay cool. And I will see you next week. Love you. Bye.